So the cage feeder is a method that's commonly forgotten about nowadays with the method feeder being so effective. So what we've come here today to do is sort of run you through how we can use a cage feeder to catch these big weights of carp, how it can actually be better in the method. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start fishing and show you exactly how to use it. So when it comes to cage feeder fishing, choosing the correct feeder is really important. Now, for the style I'm fishing today, I want my bait to release very quickly. So a cage feeder style is very important because this means the bait will actually leave the feeder very quickly and on retrieve when I'm hoping to get bites fast. Now, a standard solid feeder wouldn't be as good because obviously being a solid feeder, the water can't get in the hole so quickly so the bait wouldn't release so good. So obviously when we're getting bites quickly on this method, we'll be looking between one and two minutes it's not going to release it quick enough, so it's not really the right tool for the job. But another thing as well on the subject of feeders is the, the size of your feeder you chuck. Now, we've obviously got three different sizes of feeder here. We've got a big one, sort of a medium and a small one. Now, this all depends on where you're sort of fishing and the scenario you're faced with. So personally, for me, if I want to put some feed in and really go in and tap the peg, it was a great big feeder just to get some bait in the swim and get them confident and settled over when fishing. We sort of go to sort of fishing feeder to start with would be sort of a medium sort of cage feeder. Now the reason this is so good is because it's just the right amount of bait to catch one at a time. Now it's very similar to when using the cab pot when you're pole fishing. So I, for sort of a starting guide, I'd always go for a medium. So it's sort of a nice amount of a bait to catch one fish at a time. And I'd always start on this feeder and then I can sort of work out what I'm going to do from there. Also the subjects coming weight of feeders, I always think it's important to fish the sort of the lightest feed you can get away with. So ideally I'd use anything between 50, 15 sorry, and 30 grams is a good choice of feeder. And obviously the lighter you can get away with, the quieter it's going to go in and the better it's going to be. Now obviously you've got a different sort of different few feeders on the market where you've got side weighted ones and ones with the weight around the bottom. Now my choice for this style of fishing is always going to be the side weighted if possible because it just release, releases that bait a bit faster. It's a bit more efficient when fishing in this style. Now the bottom weighted ones are absolutely fantastic for casting, but the only disadvantage of this is with how the feeder lands and the shape of it, the bait is going to come out a bit slower. So it's not going to be so sort of faster fishing when you're actually bagging up and catching these weights of carp. As a feed through the feeder, I like to stick with two basically. I've got micro pellets and I've got ground bait. Now starting off with the micro pellets, I like to use these in sort of cooler conditions personally or if the venue is more suited to micros or ground baits not allowed. Now the reason I prefer micros when it's cooler, they're a bit more of a safer bet and when it's sort of more steady fishing they're always going to be a safe bet so they're not going to blow your peg up or ruin it or attract nuisance fish. So micro pellets, for me when it's cooler is always a good safe bet. Then we come on to ground bait. Now personally for me in the warmer weather ground bait is my personal choice. It just means you can use a slightly bigger feeder and put more bait in and that means you can attract more fish and they make them easy to catch. But you also got to think about this method, it's very similar to margin fishing. So if you're fishing down the margins, why not fish the same bait across? So ideally the more ground bait I can put through on the, through the feeder on the far side, it's almost like fishing the margins. So I'm going to attract loads of fish in my peg and it's going to make them easy to catch hopefully. So that will run us through now to hook baits. I've just got simply two choice of hook baits. I've got some washers, both five mil in, sort of a pink and the yellowy colour. Now I both know these are good hook baits on the day and I've caught plenty of fish on them. So I know if I keep simple, either them two, I've got obviously my dead maggots, that I'm going to be a safe bet. So obviously that brings me on to be dead maggots. Now you can actually put a few of these through the feeder, some days where you think the fish are getting a bit sort of preoccupied on the ground bait. But also if you put like three or four of these on the hook, it can be a great bait on the day. Cage feeder doesn't cast like a method feeder. It's a bit more bulky, a bit more heavier, so you need the correct tools to do the job. Now the rod choice I've gone for today is a Daiwa SLR. Now this might sound quite heavy, but it means if I get any sort of crosswind or bad conditions, I'm going to hit the clip and be accurate every single time, which is really important with this method. Went on to the real choice, got a 4012 TDR again, 
nice big reel. It's going to make everything easy for me, which is dead important. You don't want to be struggling or anything like that. Going on to line, nice strong reliable line. We've got eight pound Darwin ST and a 10 pound shot leader. Now you're probably wondering why I've got a shock leader on, but when I'm going to have to punch that feeder, I want something nice and strong and durable, it's not going to let me down and that's why I've got that. It's all about strength and durability when you're catching these big weights. Actually coming on to the rig itself, it is super simple and I've always found this the best. I've tried all different rigs in the past and always come back to this. So it's simple, I've got a link swivel directly on the line, full free, completely free running. And that literally just comes down to a quick change feed, it's as simple as that. It never tangles, it never lets me down and I've got no problems with losing fish or anything like that. It's just nice and simple and it always does the job correctly. Then coming down to the hook link, we're at the, uh, the Glee Fisher in. It's always, you've got basically use a 20 inch hook link. So I've got a 20 inch hook link and I've actually got a 022 uh, hook link line, which sounds really heavy. But when you're catching these big carp and big weights of carp, you need something strong and durable and it's not going to let you down. You wouldn't probably necessarily think the hook choice would be that important, but trust me, it is. So here at the Glebe today, we're going to use a size 12 Guru Pellet Waggler hook. Now, you're probably thinking, well, that sounds massive or that's too big, but the reason it works so well is because it's actually a heavy hook, it's going to sink faster, meaning less foul hookers and more bites converted as well when the fish picks it up because we've got that long tail. And coming on to hook baits, we've obviously mentioned we've used dead maggots and wafters, so it's dead simple. I've got a bayonet, herring bayonet, where I've got a wafter on, or if I'm going to fish dead maggots, I simply cut it off with a pair of scissors and put three or four maggots on the hook. That's my sort of general rule when I'm cage feeder fishing, and that's the kit I stick to. Right, so we've been fishing for a while now, and the fishing's really good. So we're going to run you through the process of how I do it. So casting is really, really important. The more accurate you are, the more you're going to catch, and also getting near the far bank. So I'm going to actually run you through how I'm doing it now. So it's dead simple, left hand, and fill me feeder with plenty of ground bait. I've got obviously a wafter on the hook. And taking your time, getting your cast is really important. Getting everything dead right, take your time, nice smooth cast. Hit the clip, lovely. But also you've got to think as well when you're doing this style of fishing is, you've obviously got that 20 inch hook link, so you don't want your feeder landing in the grass because obviously your hook link's gonna get caught up. So by having your feeder just slightly short, it's gonna mean your hook bait is gonna land right next to that bank and it's gonna catch your carp. So the actual process I like to go through when I'm actually fishing like this is quick casting. So I'm literally, I've got a little stopwatch here on my left and basically, I'm going to leave it in between a minute and two minutes. So if not an indication, I'm going to literally going to reel in after a minute and chuck again. Now this might sound a bit, oh, I've got a bite. There you go. You can see how quickly we get a bite there. So that's what I was just about to lead you on to, is you get your bite time at this place very, very fast. So if you just chuck it in and be sort of lazy and leave it sort of three or four minutes, you're not going to build a swim or catch them fish. So it's actually been, Nice and active and building a swim, which actually leads you to getting more fish and you, you're swimming and actually catching more. That's actually a nice skimmer, which is a nice, uh, it's a nice change. But again, you see how fast that bite come and that's how I expect to catch on this method. It's a nice sort of attacking aggressive method and you're all about building a little area of feed. It's the same again. Load your feed up. Again, I can't stress how important it is taking your time getting your casting right because if you made a big area, you're going to have feed all over the place and then in turn you're going to catch less fish. So take your time, straight behind you, hit your clip, then down. I do it, to be fair with you, I don't even bother sinking the line because I'm fishing so quick and it's not like a method feeder. If that feeder does move a bit, I've got that 20 inch hook link so it's not going to matter too much. It's more like get it on the rest and wait for a bite. So I've got my little stopwatch here. I'm going to literally give it a minute now because I've caught a skimmer. I want more bait to go in the peg. So I'm going to sort of give it regular, more, sort of more regular castings, look for indications, line bites and stuff like that. And then that sort of tell me I can probably slow my casting down and play around with it. But all the time, I'm just looking for indications. If I'm not getting any indications, it means I need to put more bait in and get more food in. So that's the, basically the most important way of this method is just being constantly busy and being focused and just basically don't be lazy. Because it same with your margin swim, if you're fishing down the margins, you put plenty of bait in. Obviously with a little feeder, oh, bit of a bite there. 
with a little feeder you can't put the same volume of bait in like you can with a pole cup so ideally you need to be casting more to make to sort of promote the same effect so how you mix this ground bait for this method is really important now obviously if your ground bait was too wet the bait's not going to release quickly and our regular chucking it's going to be no good because we're going to be drawing bait all over the place so that's not the one so i actually mix my ground bait which is green swimsuit and marine halibut mix it nice and dry so once that feeder hits the water it's all going to disperse and leave that bait in my swim exactly where i want it and where i'm going to catch the fish also with my micro pellets i've done these by simply just covering water level with the pellets and they're just a nice pellet which is just sticky enough exactly how you do it with the method feeder but i'm confident they're going to release and empty exactly where i'm sort of fishing in my spot so actually thinking about how you mix your bait is actually another real important aspect of this sort of fishing because if it's too wet it's not going to release and it's not going to do its job so thinking about your bait is so important so with this method you're going to get a lot of indications now but obviously by having quite a long hook link it's knowing whether to, when to strike so if I get a bite and it's continuously going round or shaking, then I'll strike. But anything slow or little twitches, it's important not to strike because you're going to spook the fish in your swim. So waiting for the correct bite is really important. So anything violent or twitching where it's the fish is shaking it in the head, that's when to strike. So be careful not to strike at the wrong bites and foul looking fish, which ultimately spook fish in your swim. Right, so there's another fish on the cage feeder. We've literally had that bite after 30 seconds. So it's been really important today that casting no more than two minutes is the one because obviously you leave it in there, there's no attraction there once that bait's uh, just been laying there and you need to constantly create that trailer bait in your swim. So that's been really, really important. And best bait sort of bite time today has been anything from it literally hitting the water up to a minute. So keeping your cast sort of under two minutes is really important to keep that swim going. Obviously we're on to another nice carp here at the Glebe. They'll put a good scrap in. Take your time with them as well. See, nice fish. So there's another nice fish caught on the cage feeder. So today, hopefully you've learnt a few tips about another method in your armory, rather than just relying on the method feeder. So give some of these tips a go and you won't be disappointed.